So joining us now in the studio, uh, we have uh, Olufemi Aino, a solicitor in the UK and Nigeria. It's nice to have you join me yes. this morning. Yes, thank you very much. Great. And uh, we also have joining us on Skype from Benin, the Executive Director, Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice, Reverend David Ugola. Reverend Ugola, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, my brother. Great. All right, uh, uh, Olufemi, let me start with you in the studio. Yes. The controversy as to who owns the 4.2 million pounds that uh, we are talking about mm. is, is up there. Yes. You know, and everyone is saying, well, it came from Delta State, so it should go to Delta State. But okay. it seems maybe there's something in the law we laymen don't understand. Can yes. you make us understand that? You see, uh, uh, let me tell you, mm. there is an argument for and against. Okay. And I don't know which one you want first, but anyway. let, let's go for the four. <laughs> okay. Now, ideally, if you go by the law of restitution, hmm. the money is supposed to go to debtor state yeah. because the essence of restitution is to put you in a position which you would have been if the incident did not happen. Former Governor Bury was able to steal a substantial amount of money. He plundered the resources of that state because he was the governor of the state at, that, at, those particular point, at that particular point in time. Mm. And if you recover any funds, under the rule of restitution, the money is supposed to go to debt state. That's one. Mm. And if you want to go by the rule of fairness and substantial justice, the money should go to debt state. And at the same time, if you want to go by precedent, because the money recovered from former governor Dari mm -hmm. was sent to Plateau State, mm. the one we cover from late Alama Siagwa was actually of, sent, of, to uh, by by Esta, State. sent to Bayesta mm. State. So if you go by precedent, ideally, the money should go to Delta State. But the problem is this. Now, the Delta government, the Delta State government, they are now asking for this money, mm. going on the rooftops since Tuesday that this money belongs to us and it should come to us. But the difficulty here is this. There are some political leaders in that state. For one reason, or reasons best known to them, they have sympathy for corruption. Because they fail in their international obligations, in their national obligations, and that common law to bring former governor Ibori to justice. Number one, they failed to cooperate with the EFCC, you will recall. In 2008, they went to court in order to try to stop the EFCC from investigating Ibori. And the cardinal, their argument then was that, look, this man did not steal any money from us. There is no need to investigate him. Now, some people have managed to recover, to get him convicted, to recover the stolen fund. And now you are going on the rooftop and say, look, this money belongs to us. Mm. Give it to us when you didn't cooperate with the prosecutor in order to get this. As far as you're concerned, the money wasn't stolen from that, that has, argument. That has been their position. And you will still recall in 2003 or so, um, there was an application in court that 50 million or so given as bribe by former governor Burrito Ribadu, whether the money should go to federal government or it should go to Delta state government. And Justice Gabriel Kolawale of the Federal High Court then said that, look, the money should go to federal government because the Delta state government tried to protect Ibori hmm. from being investigated or from facing all the allegation of fraud against him. So they can't have the money. And now, we have 4.2 million in the kitty. They are now saying, give us the money. But are you not the same people? We have been saying that this man did not steal money from you in the first instance. So that is where I have an issue. But the point is this. Under international law, when you recover this sort of money, states and na or nations are under a duty to make sure the money gets back to the poor. In which case, you can use it for your development projects, or at the same time, you know what happened to Abasha Lutz, mm -hmm. I think, under the social investment, whatever, yeah. the money was distributed here and there. And that is the way it's supposed to be. But for the people in Delta State, I don't think they're entitled to this money because of their previous conduct. Mm -hmm. They 
have sympathy for corruption. They did not work in, and as far back as 2016, the United Kingdom said that state will not get that money. So this did not start now. It started years back. And they make no attempt to help the prosecution to get this man convicted. Rather, what they were doing, they failed to produce the necessary evidence that will help, but eventually the man was convicted because he pleaded guilty in London court in 2012, and he was sentenced to 13 years imprisonment. And now, they see, but the money we are talking about here, please, let us get it right. This is not even from Ibori, it's from some of his friends and associates. The, about there's still about 170 million dollars that is still going through the confiscation proceedings at Sodok Crown Court in London. Mm -hmm. So that is the Ibori, and the Ibori is fighting tooth and nail to make sure that those that substantial amount is not confiscated. But the owners is still on the Delta State government to cooperate with the prosecution. As for this one, they won't get anything, and because an agreement has been signed that the money should be spent on this. Uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. But irrespective, indirectly, they will still benefit. After all, once we have a good road on Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the people in Delta State <laughs> will apply the road to. All right, let me bring, bring you, uh, Reverend David Gola, here. <laughs> the, the point there is, you, you are also very central to, to this because one, uh, you are a lawyer, two, you have uh, helped to monitor some of the repatriated fund on that battle loot before on, on the disbursement Three, you're from Delta State and all of that. So you're you <laughs> you someone who is very central to this. But talk to us basically how you respond to this because the, the lawyer in the house too has given us areas that we can look, try to enlighten and educate us where this is coming from and where we are going. So talk to us from your perspective. Again, um, first let me thank TVC for this Opportunity and for this burning issue on the limb light so that people can have a clarity and understanding. Mm. And we all have responsibility to when we come to the public. Even after the program, they can also uh, have a way to validate what we are saying. Mm. With due respect to my friend on the studio, um, first I want to say uh, publicly I'm not a lawyer. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, uh, that's, that's, that's a mix up there, sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 I'm self in protection. Yeah. And so, um, First, I want to um, let you know that there is a difference between data state government and the people of data state. So, the, and the people of data state deserve respect from everybody. They are not thieves. It's like saying that Nigerians are thieves because Abasha stole money. We have to have this clarity. Abasha was a president, was a head of state. He abused his privilege as a president. But that does not show that the people of Nigeria, including the lawyer in the studio, to be called a thief. So the people of Delta State, I'm from Delta State, for 30 years I have been campaigning for anti-corruption work around the world. I am, and I am among the 20 anti uh, asset governance parties in the world. So I am not a thief. So we must be very clear. There's a difference between government and the people. And in anti-corruption fight, we have what we call the victim of corruption. The victim of corruption in Nigerians and the Nigerian people, the victim of corruption in Delta State, are the people of Delta State. Mm. So once we have that clarity, then we will we'll be able to put where the issue are. And then two, I don't know where my friend in the studio got the information from. When he said, British government said that the money will not go to Delta State. And I challenge him publicly to show me evidence where that statement was made, who made it in the British government. Mm. First, Again, I also want to move that the issue of asset return to data state. There are there are provisions within government law which this present government have put in place in the absence of proceed of proceed of corruption framework in Nigeria, and we are guided by those framework on what we are demanding. And I'm happy that my friend in the studio have also stated that, that there are precedent. We have Bayasa State as a president. We have Plato State as a president. So, data state should not be an exception. And the concept of victim of corruption provides a framework that those who are affected when corruption happens. In this instance of Ibori, the people of data states are the victim. And I don't have any, any legal provision, excepting my friend in the studio who directed me to that provision, that shows that 
If a state government do not cooperate with a law prosecution, on the basis of that, the victim of corruption will be denied the access of the benefit of the corruption. I have not seen it. He should point me to the provision in the legal framework. Mm -hmm. So I will put that as a framework to guide our discussion as ongoing. What the federal government have done to the federal minister of justice is unacceptable. There is no provision, there is no legal framework to back them. Mm -hmm. What has happened is that it's just a perception. And that could have also been used by the Swiss government against Nigeria. It's just because Transparency International publishes that in their corruption perception index, that Nigeria is a corrupt country. And because of that, Abasha money should not be returned. The Swiss government did not do that to Nigeria. Neither the Jesse government or the US government in the Abasha 4 or the Irish government in the Irish government. So what I am seeing in, the, in this case is that Delta State is a minority state, is a, is a minority tribe. And what we have seen in the federal level, we have ethnic groups that runs the country, the major tribe. This is what has really led to this conception. So what needs to be done, and that's what we have raised very fundamentally, that the money received by the federal government in trust for the victim of the corruption in Delta State need to return to Delta State for two reasons. And people talk about and people talk people talk about people talk about the, the question that data state is corrupt that's a secondary issue and there are countries around the world where there are huge corruption and the, and the government is corrupt restitution has happened there are different systems put in place to address those issues and as a matter of fact as i said earlier on it's a secondary issue but the issue that the money should be returned to data state there are legal evidence to provide that backing and two the money we are talking about when the prosecution were going on in London, mm -hmm. both the Ibori associate and others, the question is that what was the evidence provided in the court in London that led to the prosecution and confiscation of these assets? Go back again, and I recommend to my lawyer in the studio mm -hmm. to go and study the evidence, even the evidence provided by EFCC to the British prosecution. Mm -hmm. All the evidence point to the fact that the money came from Delta State. So what are we saying? The people of Delta State never were not consulted by the Nigerian government or the EFCC. As a matter of fact, E.K. Clark, Chief E.K. Clark, the leader of Delta State leader, was very vociferous when the campaign was going on. Nobody in this country was more, more stronger than E.K. Clark. So what are we saying? What are we saying? Who can tell me that they were more, more activistic, more provided more advocacy for sanity to come to the data state. So that we should put that issue aside. We should never, and there is no way there is a legal provision that says that the people of data state must be the one to prosecute Ibori or his all associate. Right. Mm -hmm. all right, if all the right. government Reverend of Gala. the chooses to act contrary, yes. Okay. Okay, Reverend Golo, you've raised two things that uh, uh, the lawyer in the studio, Lufami, I know, would uh, like to respond to. Yes, uh, number one, uh, uh, look, I don't want to engage in a circular argument. Mm -hmm. Neither should we engage in any dog fights mm -hmm. about The, the idea is just but to enlighten the people. Just to enlighten yeah. the public. And I do take some of his point. But first of all, let me take the first challenge. He said, look, I should substantiate where it was said in 2016 that this money would not go to the state. There was a breaking news in the punch in 2016 when the negotiation about repatriation of this money started and the punch it was a front page story where the British government said that they will not the money will not get go to data state and they have a genuine concern don't forget Ibori is a very influential individual in that state he was a very a former governor of that state and at the same time if I'm recovering money and I know that this money is going to a state where somebody, this person is a very substantial person. Remember the former governor of that state is a cousin to Governor Ibori, uh, Dr. Oduanga or something, if I can get his name right. So there should be a genuine concern that, look, if we give this money to Delta State, is it not probable that this money, with one way or the other, we find its way to this gentleman, uh, to Governor Ibori. So, and you could see from the agreement here, there is nothing about data states under the, the memorandum of understanding which was signed. And the second point which he raised, which I think I align myself with slightly, when he said that, look, 
where is it in the law that if you don't cooperate in the prosecution of mm. individual, yeah. restitution should not take place. You should not benefit. I can understand where it's coming from. But my own point is this. If the data state government, which I understand is an institution, is different from the data state the people. people and what I said is that there are some people in that state, some of the political leaders in that state, who have sympathy for corruption in the sense that, don't forget, there was an attempt at a point to arrest Ibori, and the EFCC officers, they were chased off. You recall that that was in the public domain then. Then in 2008, the data state government tried as much as possible to prevent EFCC from investigating Ibori. Eventually, Ibori found its way to Dubai. From Dubai, it was extradited to London. And some of the evidence used in his conviction at Southern Crown Court in London, they were obtained from the office of his lawyer. Because the of, you know the investigation into Ibori loot started in 2005 when there was an attempt to buy a private jet, and from there the authorities in the UK started the investigation. They used. I'm not saying that they might have used some of the evidence from data state in a way, but they failed to cooperate. And if you fail to cooperate to bring somebody into conviction, and we manage to recover something from that person and we convict him one way or the other and you are now going on the rooftop and say no give me the money your action is not consistent with somebody who abide by their obligation under international law to prevent corruption and make sure the perpetrators of corruption are brought to justice and there is something the masses in that state they are the victim of this looted fund we are talking about substantial justice that's what uh, the distinguished reference didn't take on board i said it earlier fairness precedent and substantial justice demand that this money should go to them but the action of their government is not consistent mm. with the, what you were expect. yeah but what revenue gola is saying there's a difference between the government the action of the government and yes. the people of I, Delta State. I agree. That's why the government is an institution and the people is an association. Mm. And I, it is I, the people that I agree. Victim. But there will not be there will not be a government without the people. Mm. And the government is there to serve the people. So to separate the two, it might be difficult. Are we going to go to that state and start giving the money to the people in the in the in the, in the market, or are we going to give the money to the government okay. so that they serve the people? And all that right, is the general. Right. Reverend Gola, let me come to you here. Uh, besides the issues that that both of you have raised uh, one side on the other making us to understand this but personally do you have concern that there could be the possibility that if this money returns to Delta State somehow it could still be misappropriated do you have that concern that concern is one of the key issues around asset recovery okay. and uh, I, I am talking from experience and then for best practice in the world. First, I want to uh, again um, thank my friend in the studio who have now acknowledged that there is a difference between government and the people. And on the basis of that, and there are precedent globally when you are returning asset to a country where you don't trust the system, you can put in place a framework mm -hmm. that can overcome that challenge. And there are precedents in the world. And as a matter of fact, recent returns to Nigeria take that into consideration very well. Otherwise, the $321 million that was returned to Nigeria in the Abasha through, the long negotiation that took place, considering from both countries, Switzerland and Nigeria, wouldn't have happened. Switzerland would have just transferred the money to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It was the concern whether the money would be used because I was part of the people who monitor the first uh, $700 million that was transferred to Nigeria. And it went down the drain. And because of what happened with the first transfer from Abasha to Nigerian government, and this was during uh, Obasanjo regime, the Swiss government and the Swiss people became concerned about the credibility of the Nigerian government to spend every return money. Oh. And so because of that, there was a negotiation that led to the MOU. And in that MOU, civil society and stakeholders were consulted. And you can see the sources around the Abasha too, with some little challenges. So I like to um, also share with my friend that the issue of whether if you transfer money to a country or a sub-regional unit, whether the money will be stolen, is a big concern on asset return. And there are precedents on how it should be done. 
it doesn't take away the fact that the victim should not benefit from the return mm -hmm. because Nigeria and other countries have signed on to the Global Forum on Asset Recovery Principle. Mm -hmm. And one of the basic principle elements is the issue of victim of corruption should be the people to benefit. And I also share the concern that, um, that uh, is going around, that if the money returned to the non uh, 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 without putting in place a really right framework, the money could, could be rerouted. And that's why we are saying that the president in Azerbaijan, there are precedents where the country government is not trusted. So a third party was contracted to spend the money. For instance, the federal government who have recovered the money on behalf of Delta State can put in place through federal government agency to ensure that the money goes to the Delta people and in cooperation with Delta State government. And most cases, the recovered loot. We have a, a, a asset recovery, recovered a loot uh, account in the central bank and central bank do not release the money if you don't demonstrate some milestone evidence. And that's what is going on now between the Nigerian government and Bayasa and the U.S. government until Alamisi Arlut will be returned. So I share the concerns of people about perception about data state governance system, but that is not sufficient enough because otherwise you'll be setting a precedent. And that's why we are saying that what happened to Bayasa, what happened to Plato State, Lessons. Nobody has shown evidence in the country that the money returned to those two states were properly used. All right. If there are lessons from it, we could improve. Mm. But don't change the principle of victim of corruption. It is not data government that is the victim. It is the data people that is the victim. Mm. And we also need to be very careful. There is nobody that can claim a cent in this country that doesn't know that political leaders are all over the country. There is no state where you don't have political leaders who probably do not believe in anti-corruption work. Mm. Does that not say that if such state is, uh, asset is looted from that state, the asset will not be returned? Are you saying that the federal government is more even, more earlier than the states? Are there no problems? Are there no challenges? So the question is that, if the British government was to use the same language that the Nigerian government is using on the data return, I am sure that the money will not return to Nigeria. But based on the principle of asset return, and based that there are practices on how you can do it. And one key element when you are negotiating asset return is the issue of trust. Mm. And I can agree, and I must commend the Attorney General of Nigeria. Mm. He has done very well. And his people working with him for the asset return. The real blame is in the doorstep of data state government. All right. There's no doubt. Okay. The data state government have acted in a manner that is very strongly of, of, that one cannot agree with. But the issue that if the state government have done wrongly, he does not take away the fact that the money is right. not returned. We, to we, we, we have to round it off here. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend David Dugolo, I must thank you so much uh, for your insights and uh, uh, you, the, mm -hmm. everything you have said uh, to enlighten us in this regard. We certainly will have to bring back this discussion mm -hmm. so we can clarify so many areas. And uh, Olufemi Aino, UK and Nigeria solicitor, thank you so much for coming on the program yes, as well. Sir, we have you. so many things to talk about yes, this to enlighten well, people, right. but we don't have all the time right now. But uh, we thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the right, program. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Right.